Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to show you how you can um, use or how you can use RDS to create a MySQL database using Aurora. So I'm in my AWS dashboard and I'm going to uh, create an uh, RDS instance. So let's search for RDS. At this moment, there is no database running. So let's create a database here. So I will choose Aurora. Aurora with MySQL compatibility. I will choose provision rather than serverless. So let's choose provisioned. And I'm going to choose a MySQL compatible version that is uh, 5.7 latest. 5.7 with 2.10.0. Oh. Okay. Then um, we're going to use dev and test, not the production, because it's only the size matters. Everything is same. You just, if for production, you will have a bigger size. For dev and test, you will have a smaller size. So in the settings, let me give some name. My uh, Aurora DB. This is the root username. Let's create a root user. MySQL root user. Password, let's generate a password here with a password generator. Okay. Okay. So then we have uh, we need to choose the smallest one for testing purpose. And let's see if we have which is the smallest one. I think this is the smallest one. T two small. Okay. Then availability and durability multi ac at this moment i'm not going to use multi ac for production i definitely recommend to use multi ac so connectivity uh, default vpc subnet group default public access yes i'm going to access it publicly because i'm going to use mysql workbench to connect over there but if you don't need it you just click no Security group default, that's fine. Availability zone, no preference. Uh, port, that's fine. Database authentication, password authentication, that's cool. Additional configuration. Let's create a database here. So let's do a WordPress database. Backup one day and um, Okay. Enable delete protection, that's also important. So let's create the database. Well, that's the difference between using uh, an R RDS MySQL compared to Aurora, because you see, you have a clustered environment here, but in MySQL, there will be only one instance. So that's a big difference. And uh, I also see a big performance boost on Aurora compared to MySQL because it's optimized and managed by AWS by itself. So these are the big advantages of using Aurora. And I highly recommend to use Aurora for production environments because it gives you the ability to uh, use a production uh, scalable database. It seems like similar to have performance like Oracle very cheap because it, it's there is no license fee related to involved in it this takes around five minutes time i will pause it and then when it's ready i will rejoin again
Okay, so I'm back here, and as you can see, uh, our server is up and running. It's available. CPU is good. So uh, if I go to the details, I see the connectivity. This is the endpoint. If I go to configuration, I will see the username as well. This is the database name. This is the instance name. And okay, so. This is the root username. If I take a note, and this is the password that we used, and this is the host name. So, are we done yet? No, we need to whitelist our IP address as well. For that, I just need to go to the default security group. Edit the existing rules and add my IP to the port 3306 so that I can connect to that MySQL database. Okay, my network seems to be having some problem. I just switched to a mobile network, just a moment. Uh, let me switch to a mobile network. Okay, so I go here, IIP. It should show my IP. That's great. Okay, now let me refresh this page one more time. And then I go to the details. And let's add a rule. So it's MySQL, Aurora, my IP, let's keep my name. So that's it. Now I go to Workbench. If you haven't installed Workbench, the process is simple. You just need to go to uh, MySQL uh, Workbench Download. You just Google MySQL Workbench Download and there are a lot of uh, options here. I think it's a standard to just download it from the official website, my dev.mysql.com slash download slash workbench. Choose the Windows version, and then I would say go for the MSI installer because that's easier for the installation. So I have already installed it. Let's uh, create a new connection. I'm going to give it a name, Aurora. I will uh, copy the host name here. I will copy the username. And I will copy the password. Story vault. Okay, now test connection connected successfully okay search for aurora here it is that's it 
we are now connected to that database as root user i can create new databases here let's create a new database so i'm going to create a aws with a tick i just created a new database you can create a new user here so i go to users and privileges very simple very easy anyone can do this add an account let's say give it a name aws user give it a password you can generate the password from here copy the password simply paste the password okay then schema privileges that's important you need to understand are we going to create a user for all the databases or for a specific database we can do that both for example for this user i'm going to create this user only for this specific schema so he will not be able to use other databases for example there is a database for wordpress here but this user cannot see that and that's a, a choice that we if we wanted to make these options are available that we can isolate user per database and that's that's really great for uh, data uh, access uh, priority or you can isolate users authorizations per database so i have uh, created the user and uh, this user now can be connected that database so let's this is there's no tables here let's create a table uh give it a name uh users uh simple table so it's id that should be primary key not null auto increment then i give it a username virtual i usually choose 255 email virtual 255 password virtual 255 apply So that's it we have created a table and if we uh, go to the details of the table you can see there is no data you can add data as well so let's keep id empty it will be auto generated let's say I give it a username uh, aws with a tick email info at aws with a tick dot com and password let's just paste the password well, I'm saving, uh, I'm not going to save simple password. Let's, I just show you what I do. Uh, I use a function here. There is a function available in MySQL to MD5. So even though some people say MD5 is not safe, but for the time being, you can use it. This is still good. Okay, so MD5 password apply, and that's it. So you see, my password is not really visible to user. It's encrypted. So for the time being, what we have shown here is we created an instance in Aurora. We created, uh, we have uh, whitelisted our IP address. We have created a database. We have created a user with permissions only for that database. We have created a table. We have created a row. We have created columns over there with passwords and we have used MySQL function MD5 to encrypt the password and store it over there. So I think this is a start. You can explore all those MySQL features over uh, using MySQL Workbench and do all those cool stuffs here. I highly recommend to use MySQL uh, Aurora because it's optimized and it's really production great. So, before I close, uh, let's uh, delete the RDS. Because my work is done.
and I'm going to close this. To avoid unnecessary billing, I just need to delete or shut down all those instances to avoid unnecessary billing. So um, let's delete. Okay, that's good. We need to modify it. So before, as I have ticked the enable deletion protection, did this is very good because this helps you to prevent unnecessary deletion. You cannot someone just accidentally cannot delete that. So uh, now I need to disable that feature and then I need to come back again to delete that. Let's uh, create here actions, delete. I think this time I should be able to delete. Uh, delete me. Amazing. So uh, let's refresh. I think it's deleting. Should shouldn't take that much time. I think two or three minutes. That should be sufficient. Okay. So I think you get the idea how to use MySQL Aurora in AWS. I hope you will use Aurora in your next projects. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.